Good afternoon. My name is Amy Zimler, and I work with the State 4-H Department here at the NMSU campus in Las Cruces. Um, and what I am going to talk about today is the opportunity for youth to apply for the New Mexico 4-H Community Service Scholarship. What this does is it provides funding to pay for event registration fees as well as uh, fees for leadership team opportunities. Okay, um, these are events as to what the scholarships go towards um, to cover the full registration costs for annual events. Those include senior leadership retreat that's in January, FCS school, which used to be home ec school, um, that's offered in March, youth getaway that's offered in April, the New Mexico 4-H dog school, usually offered in the beginning of June, horse school, also offered in the beginning of June, livestock school is done regionally and their times vary towards the end of June, beginning of July, and State 4-H conference, which happens in July. Um, the other events that partial fees are handled, meaning the total amount is not paid, um, is the State 4-H officers, um, the State 4-H ambassador positions, and in some cases, depending on what, what the event is or the service that the youth would be serving, is either to national or international trips. The next couple of slides are going to be um, talking about the guidelines for applying for the scholarships. Um, the first one is siblings, multiple youth cannot do the same project together. So if they have if they have an idea and they want to partner up with it, they can't. Um, they can do projects at the same location, but they have to be different. They cannot be the same with each other. Uh, community service through established organizations like volunteering to clean up trash or serve food um, will not be accepted. If that's all they're going to do or all they want to do is just volunteer and aren't planning to coordinate anything, um, those types are not accepted. Um, they can work with an established organization in creating a new project that will benefit that organization. So things like um, animal services, public services, um, services for disabled people, things like that that are already established, um, the kids can, can talk with them about creating a new project. Um, this must be a project. Or, excuse me, the project must be an activity that the youth designs, organizes, and implements that will have an impact on the community. So this is solely up to the youth to design this. An applicant who receives the scholarship has up to a year to complete it. So from the time that they receive it, depending on the event that they're applying for, they have a full year to complete it. They don't have to complete it between the time the application accepted until the event. So they have a whole year to complete the project. A completed project must be submitted before they can apply for the scholarship again. If the project is not completed, they are not qualified to submit another application. So the applications or the, the projects have to be done before a second application, third application, et cetera, can be submitted. Applications must be submitted two months prior to the State 4-H Department event registration deadline. An example for this, if event registration is due on May 15th, the application has to be submitted by March 15th. May 15th. Um, I'll show you the website here that, that lists the different dates for the events. This allows enough time for the committee who judges to review the application and the applicant to be notified um, 
if it's accepted or if the judges need more information. Uh, if the judges do need more information, a letter will be sent back to the applicant asking for the information they need and given a deadline to return it to the committee. Um, after, after a youth applies for community service scholarship, receives it, and either decides not to attend the event that they applied for or cannot do it due to conflict, um, there are three options that are listed on the website. Um, the options is that they can, they can use it for another event, they don't have to do it, um, or use it for the following year. At the completion of the community service project, a report will be sent to the committee. Um, it's recommended if they can add pictures, if they had distributed a flyer, um, et cetera, are, are great for the judges to see, especially if they're wanting to submit um, for another scholarship after the first one. Some tips when filling out the application, um, be as detailed as possible when answering each of the questions. Um, the judges are not going to be aware of all the details of what your plan is when they're when they're reading through the application. So as many, many details as possible is very important and helps the judges quite a bit when they're when they're judging the application. The application online is fillable. Um, it does not have to be printed off. If possible, I would recommend typing it out. Um, sometimes, depending on the age of the child, it's difficult to read handwriting. So if it is possible for them to fill it out in the fillable form online, it makes it a lot easier for the judges to read it clearly. Um, handwritten ones are accepted, um, but the, the option there to type is available. Um, some things for agents or to ask agents about is to make sure to review the application to know the details of the project that the youth in your um, county is doing. If the judges need more information, agents will be able to help the applicant with that um, or be able to answer questions uh, parents might have for finding more information. It is important to know when the project needs to be completed to um, encourage that youth to make sure that they get it done and send in the report. Um, can help the youth look at their community or the extension office to see uh, what the needs are to determine a project. Um, make sure all signatures are on the application and the report before submitting it to the state 4-H department. Um, here are the two or the two website links that takes you to the information. The other one takes you to the application link. These will be made available on the website also. And give me just a minute. Let me close this screen out and I'm going to take us over to the website. Okay, can can everybody see um, the website? Is it coming through? Okay, so this this information here it's it's on our state website. Uh, you go to the scholarship option in the menu on the right hand side. And this will actually take you to the full scholarship page, which I'll scroll up here real quick. Um, there are also a number of other scholarships available. So when you go into this page, um, you'll see these, these prior scholarships listed in here and the community service one is the last one on the page. But just to throw that in a little bit, there are quite a few other scholarships available for, for youth to apply for. So when you scroll to the bottom of the page, it'll say New Mexico 4-H Community Service Scholarship. 
the information that's listed here is the information that I went through um, an abbreviated version in the PowerPoint. This is a little bit more detailed on what the, the guidelines are. Um, this portion of it right here, it lists the dates that the scholarship applications have to be to the State 4-H office. Like I had mentioned, this is two months prior to our state deadline. Um, and again, you might wanna talk with your, with your agent to see if they want it prior to this so that they can review it before sending it to the State 4-H office. Um, Applications are not accepted after the deadline date, so that's very important. Um, like I had mentioned before, if for some reason the scholarship's not able to be used um, for the event that they applied for, they can either apply it to another event that falls after that one, um, use it for the following year as long as the community service um, gets completed, or they can choose not to use it and nothing, nothing will be held against them for not doing it. So um, if they are not able to use it that year. Um, okay, I'm gonna go into the website for the application. Okay, here is the application that's online that you can click there for the link. Uh, this page right here, again, just basically describes what is there on the website, too. This first page here, like I said, these, these are fillable, so they're able to type into them online here. Um, just the general information, name, age, address, county, uh, date of birth, so that we know the age um, to make sure that it matches with the event. Uh, club enrollment, number of years, your age group. Um, this right here, they check mark which uh, event they want to apply the um, scholarship to. I do have to do a little bit of editing on this um, to change home ec school to FCS, so some of that will be done. Um, when you go to the next page, this right here is what I was talking about with putting the information in on what the uh, community so service project will be. And so of course there's the title for it, um, the description. Try and be as detailed as possible when putting in the description. Uh, talking about what organization that you're going to coordinate the community service with. Uh, how are you going to recruit volunteers to help you with the project or are you going to do it on your own? So if it's something that they're going to do on their own, that's perfectly fine. Um, but it's also good if they list the volunteers, whether it's going to be their 4-H group, if it's going to be brothers or sisters, um, family members, but how they're going to volunteer to, to do part of your community service. Um, this right here is what are your timeline for planning. Again, this is very critical in being as detailed as possible with what you have planned out. Because again, the judges are not going to know the details about the project. So without seeing what, what, the, de what the timeline is, that kind of stuff, they may have questions on, on when things will be completed, how the process is going, et cetera. Um, the application needs to make sure to have the agent signature and the parent signature. Once the community service project is complete, they will go back and fill out the community service report. This is what will be sent in after it's done, like I had mentioned with pictures or flyers or, or details about what the community service project was. And so the first part of it is the results. Um, the second part is your audience impact. What groups did you work with? Um, did you end up having a group you weren't expecting? Um, how, how your audience was impacted and what it did for the community. The th other question is, is how did you grow? How did this make the person, how did it grow and develop skills and come up with better leadership roles? Those things, how did, how did this community service affect that? And then here, what leadership skills did you learn demonstrate while coordinating it and implementing the project? Again, this one needs the 4-H, the 4-H signature, the parent signature, and the agent signature to uh, be turned in. Okay. 